Today we're reviewing the latest release from Baker's Mark, the Heartwood release. This is their new finishing series. What's it all about? Stay tuned to find out. Welcome back to the Burr Retriever, and today we're reviewing one of the bottles that I was looking forward to this year. It is Maker's Mark, the Heart release. Uh, this is their new wood finishing series. Uh, this is coming out in 2024. In the past, it was in a different bottle shape. People refer to them as the license plate bottles because it had a big old license plate with the code and what batch release it was. But now they switched to uh, the bottle they use for their cellar age. I personally am a big fan of this bottle. I think they should put more of their uh, juice in the shape of bottle. So to give a little perspective, I don't have any of the license plate bottles, but this is what the bottle shape used to be. And where you have here, the different recipes for this private select was a big old license plate. So this new bottle shape, um, it's a little slimmer. It takes up less space on the shelf. Personally, I think it just feels better in your hand. There's a lot more weight to it. The other thing nice about these bottles is the bottles in this shape actually have uh, real corks in them, whereas these older bottles have more of the synthetic cork. All right, so getting back to this bottle specifically, uh, the Heart Release, it is uh, their Maker's Mark cast strength, which goes anywhere from 107 to 114 range and then they finish it in 10 virgin oak staves. Now, some of you out there may uh, be ringing a bell on this, and it is because it is very similar to their Maker's Mark 46 cast strength. When I saw this release come out, I was trying to do some research to figure out what is the difference between this and their 46 cask. And when I went to Maker's website to do a little research, I noticed that they do not have the 46 cast strength on their website anymore, it is gone. But with that being gone, um, I went to their just traditional 46 that comes out at around 92 proof to rebuild it on that to compare these two bottles a little bit. So for the regular 46, it says that they put seared uh, virgin oak staves in, whereas this, they say they're toasted. I don't know the difference between seared and toasted. Um, maybe in the industry, those have different terminologies. Uh, but I don't know what the difference those two things mean. I don't own the Maker's 46 or the Maker's 46 cast strength, but I think that'd be a good blind to do. Let me know in the comments if you would be interested in that, because I think it'd be good just to try them side by side to see how they are. Is the price jump worth it? Um, I know the 46, I wanna say is maybe the $40 range. I'd have to go and check. But the 46 cask, I think is $65, and this one came in at $75. So is that $10 premium over traditional 46 cast worth it? Um, I think that'd be a good blind to find out. Another thing about this batch, which I don't know if it's different or similar to the 46 cast, but for this one, they actually made two different batches. They made one batch that was finished in the Virgin Oak stays for, I think it said five weeks, and then another batch that was finished in for roughly nine, maybe 10 weeks, nine weeks, somewhere around there. And then they blended those together to make this batch. So that could be something different than the 46 cast. Maybe they don't do that blending. Maybe they just do one of the batches. I don't know exactly how long they finished for the 46 cast, but maybe that is a differentiation they have here. Uh, now moving on to the proof. This bottle is coming in at 111 proof. Uh, when I went to the website to read more about this bottle, it actually gave a range. It said anywhere from 107 to 114. So I don't know if that is just signifying that is what their cast strength only come out with, and that was all that was blended into this batch or if we're gonna see several releases throughout the year, similar to what BEP, they had two different batches of those at different proofs. We might be seeing different batches of this at different proofs, I don't know, um, but with seeing that range of proofs, it made me think that there might be. Now, if you look at the side of the bottle, it says that this is gonna be one of five releases. Uh, they haven't released what the other four releases are gonna be, but I have a theory. I don't know how you know realistic it is, but I think this would be pretty cool um, I noticed when I saw this, it is 10 virgin oak staves. And if you go to the private selects, they have five different staves they use for their finishing process. And one of them is the virgin French oak stave. So I wonder if the other four releases are going to be the other French staves at 10. Um, so you can at home try, what does this stave profile make? If they actually end up doing that, I think that's gonna be a pretty cool thing to own if you can collect all five of them. And then at home, you can kind of make your own private selection. You can blend them together and come up with your own perfect blend. However, if this is true, um, I kind of wish they would do more the Four Roses style where they would make it as a set 
and you can get it all at once uh, because waiting five years to collect them all uh, does seem a rather long time for that experiment. And lastly, if they actually were doing this type of system, I think they would have announced it um, because it would make more hype for these bottles where you needed to collect them all so you could do that type of stuff at home. So since they haven't announced that, I don't think that's what they're actually doing, but I think that'd be a pretty cool idea. All right, with that, let's go ahead and jump into the bottle for tasting notes. Got a little extra seasoning there on the wood. All right, cheers. All right, my first impression is I am very glad I did not do a fresh crack review. A lot of times when I get these special releases, I feel almost like I need to get the review out immediately. But personally, I like to wait on a bottle, crack it, let it sit for a week or so, and come back to it again, because I personally have noticed a drastic difference between the fresh crack and even whiskey that's been sitting just for this little bit, for a little bit of time. When I first opened this, it was just a straight fruit bomb. There was almost no oak to it. I was almost getting like an Aperol uh, note to it. Um, which to me was a little off-putting, but um, I actually really enjoyed it because I thought it was just a very different expression than in almost any Maker's Mark product I got. But now as it sits here a little longer, um, getting it's still very fruit forward. Um, that is a prominent note, but I am definitely getting that French oak in the back end of it. And then a little bit in the mid palate, there's just this heavy vanilla bomb. So you get that fruit, vanilla, and the French oak, which I think is making a nice well-rounded smell. Yeah, the more I'm sniffing this and the longer it's sitting in the bottle, the French oak is becoming more and more predominant. So I imagine as this gets further down, that French oak influence is just going to become more noticeable. But yeah, overall, I think it's a nice balance. Let's go on to the palate. Okay, to me, the first thing I noticed, which I look for a lot of these higher end Maker's products, is it does not have that traditional Maker's funk. Um, all the baseline Maker's, even the Maker's 101, the cast strength, to me, I get this weird, weedy hay note um, that just, to me, is a little off-putting. I know a lot of people love it, and that's what they look for. But for me, when I'm trying to find any of the private selects, the license plate bottle, especially the Cellar Age, none of those have that uh, funk to them. But you have the nice sweetness you normally get from a weeder. But it's balanced out with other oaks, um, fruit, vanillas, and I think they're much more well-rounded drinks. And this is one of those. Um, I am just absolutely digging it. I'm really glad this was released in the summer because this might be my go-to summer bottle this year. I'm getting that nice apple, vanilla, caramel, um, maybe like an apple pie, but it's not, maybe I take that back, it's not quite baked yet. It's more of like the raw apple pie with a lot of that just vanilla drizzle all over it. Yeah, that is just so nice, light, fruity. The French oak traditionally also gives you that nice lighter oak appeal. It's not normally a very dark, rich oak, and there's absolutely no burn to this, um, which I look for in a bourbon. I want it not to taste as proof. Traditionally, I want a bourbon that tastes under its proof because that means you're getting the flavor without the ethanol burn. And this coming out at 111, I would not guess 111. I would probably go down closer to 105, maybe 107. Um, I'm just not getting any of that ethanol burn that typically comes with higher proof whiskey. Yeah, not having any of that burn adds to this drinkability on a very hot summer day. I don't know where you are in your part of the country, but we are in a massive heat wave in Virginia, and I need something, if I'm gonna drink whiskey, that's nice, light, fruity, not something that's just gonna be heavy, blow your mouth out, palate, dark, rich notes. I want something that's more of a light, crisp drink. Kind of similar, I don't know how many of you are wine drinkers, but traditionally in the summer, you drink maybe a Riesling, a nice white, because it's nice, crisper, and lighter, whereas in the summer months, whereas in the winter months, you'll drink something that's red, earthier, darker. I'd equate that to similar what I'm talking about here with the whiskeys. Yeah, I'll need to do a side-by-side -side of this and the 46 cask. My memory of drinking the 46 cask, it was very tannic. Um, you could definitely tell the oak was there and it was a little too much, whereas I think this is almost finished perfectly. And you have that French oak there. It's nice, light, delicate. Um, you notice it, but it's not overpowering and does not just ruined the end palette of it. All right, before I get into my final breakdown, if you're enjoying this content, hit the subscribe button. That way you don't miss any content going forward. All right, for my final grade on this bottle, I say it's a buy. I would go out and buy this. It is $74. I think that is a very reasonable price point for this bottle. I think it's also just a perfect time for it to release. I am enjoying it. I think it's probably one of the better makeup products I've had. 
uh, the Celerage is still tops, it beats it. Um, but this, on my, my personal opinion, I think it's one of the better private selects you can get. And the price point on this is coming in at $75. That is the same price as the private selects. And to me, a lot, private selects can be hit or miss. That's why you need to make sure you get a sample at a store that's doing a pick of it, because I would say it's maybe 60-40, where I enjoy maybe 40% of them, 60% I don't. Whereas I think this one is a definite buy. I would say the people that enjoy this bottle were the people who like Four Roses, uh, things that are more of on the fruitier side of whiskey. If you like to chase the dark oat notes, rich, savory type of whiskeys, this is not that. So this would not be in your flavor profile. Uh, but me personally, I think this is definitely a bottle I am glad to have. And I would, if I given the opportunity, I would buy it again. I don't think it's a bottle you need to back up. Um, it's not a bottle that you need to pay on secondary for. I think $80, $80 $75 is a uh, good price point for this bottle for what you're getting. I would not pay over for it, but overall I am digging this bottle and I would not be shocked if I bottle kill this by the end of summer. So that's my review of the Heartwood release. If you're enjoying this content, before you head out, check out this video or this one, and until next time, cheers.